All right, continuing where we left off, um, in this next video, I'm going to show you how to set up the LOD manager. So, um, the previous video, I showed you how to do this first step, which was grouping objects and baking the combined materials. Uh, in this, I'm going to show you how to add an LOD manager to the scene. Then, I'll show you how to create the LOD prefabs and add the camera components. So um, it's probably easiest to do this in the same scene and then prefab the LOD manager and use drag all the prefabs when we're done to the game scene. So let's add, set up the LOD manager right in this scene that we've already done. So uh, to add an LOD manager to the scene, you just go down to the MeshBaker LOD folder. Um, LOD folder and there's a prefabs directory in there and you can just drag that into your scene. That's the easiest way but it's also just this one script attached to a game object so you could create it yourself if you want. And so the role of the LOD manager is all the it's a singleton class there's only one of them in your scene and then the individual LOD objects in your scene will register with the manager get mapped to a baker and baked into a combined mesh. So the main thing we have to do here is set up the bakers. So first off, let's drag these three mesh bakers that we created to be children of the LOD manager. So they're going to be the bakers that handle the baking for the LOD manager. And we have to add them to the LOD manager component here. So I'm going to add over three of them. So I'm going to create three bakers in the, in the list of bakers in the LOD manager. And the first field in each one is the mesh baker that that LOD manager is going to handle. So I'm going to drag the doors to the first one, the houses and trees, and the windows. The order is not important. Um, so now this LOD manager um, has three bakers and it can handle um, basically when an LOD object registers with the LOD manager it looks at the materials on that LOD object and sa says the LOD manager says, um, does say it's the window that registers with the LOD manager. The LOD manager looks in this list and says can this mesh baker handle windows? No. Nope. Can this mesh baker handle windows? No. Nope. Can this mesh baker handle windows? Yes. Then the windows will be baked by this uh, mesh baker. And then if we look at the objects here, there's some options we can set for each baker. So cluster type, uh, grid, or simple. So grid um, is the basically divides the world, the game world, into uh, cubic volumes and inside their cells. And inside each cell, it uh, bakes all the meshes found in that cell into a combined mesh for this uh, this baker. Um, and this is the size of the cell, so 250 units. So you could make that bigger or smaller. Um, a good way to size the cells is basically on your camera. So our camera, the view plane, it, the far view plane is a thousand units. So basically the, the camera frustum is going to be a thousand units long. So um, we could make the cell size roughly a thousand and then hopefully there won't be too many clusters in our um, in our, our camera at the time and that'll re result in fewer draw calls. Okay, label. Well, in some cases, the an object could map to multiple bakers. And we've actually got that situation here because the doors have the material, Tudor House 2, and the mesh baker House and Trees also has material, Tudor House 2. So a, a, a door could map to either this baker or this baker. However, this we want to force that to map to the first baker. So to do that, we're going to set a label uh, here. We'll call this one door, and we'll call this one uh, house. And so that label, what it does is, um, if there's 
uh, more than one possible baker that can be mapped to. Um, the it, uh, mesh baker LOD tries to resolve it using the label, and we'll put a label on the end of the LOD objects later. Okay, light map index. That's uh, basically the light map index of the combined mesh that will be created here, and the LOD uh, objects that will be baked by this need to have that light map index. And max vertices per combined mesh. Why wouldn't this be 64,000? Because 64,000 okay, mesh that take a long time to bake in can cause a stutter. And if we're swapping meshes in and out of those 64,000k meshes, that can be uh, take a long time. So you can set this smaller. For example, for an iPhone, you might want to set it down around 12. Uh, for web, 30,000. For PC, you can probably get away with 60,000. And uh, these last two settings are mainly for um, uh, skin meshes. This updates the bounds of the skin mesh every frame. Um, so, and that's necessary because if the skin meshes can separate, they can walk outside the bounds, um, and then they'll vanish. They can vanish from the screen. And this you can force, um, or you you can set a limit on how many meshes are allowed in each level of detail. Um, okay, so and then these settings, uh, log level that just is what how much information is going to get output to the console number of frames between garbage collect calls um, baking creates a lot of arrays uh, and requires a lot of array allocations so uh, you, you you probably want to call the garbage collector preemptively instead of letting um, the memory fill up and then have a pause when all that gets collected at once so you can set this here. If you set this to negative one, it forces the garbage collection to, um, it basically disables the, the uh, garbage collection calls in MeshBaker LOD. So then you can look after garbage collection yourself somewhere else in your game. Uh, combine time per frame. This is a very important setting. I've got it set to 0.3 right now. It's um, basically this, when this, number is exceeded, MeshBaker will stop baking in that frame and defer whatever bakes are remaining to the next frame. So this tries to keep the frame rate smooth even when things are really busy and ignore light mapping that basically tells MeshBaker to ignore uh, those settings. Okay, so the LO, the manager is now set up. So we've got a scene with a manager. We've got these bakers. And now what we need to do is create some LOD objects. So that's the next step. So we've grouped the objects and baked the combined materials. We've added the LOD manager. Now we're going to create the LOD prefabs. So let's create the one for the trees first, because it's the simplest. So game object, create empty. I just create a new game object in my scene that's going to be the parent. We'll call it tree. And then under the tree, I'm going to drag my LOD components. Continue, tree, tree. So this is the layout that you have to have for LOD objects. So uh, the, there's a game object at the root. And on that object, I'm going to put a um, component mesh baker, an LOD component. So I've added an MB2 LOD component. This is not the same as the Unity LOD component. This is a special one that works with mesh baker LOD. And um, then underneath that, there are these the actual renderers for the three different levels. And those should be on top of each other. So if we set, reset the position on each of these, then they'll all be in the same place. Um, so this is the tree. Uh, we can also set the log level for the individual trees, baker label, 
frames between LOD checks. So you probably don't need to check LOD every single frame. Um, that would be kind of expensive. 10, this is probably going to end up being, you know, three to five times per frame. Uh, I could even set this considerably lower. You could probably get away with once every second kind of thing. And that will actually reduce the overhead of the baking a lot and it'll batch um, LOD bakes. There'll be a lot more LODs changing in every bake and that's much more efficient. It's just as fast to change all the meshes in an LOD in a combined mesh as it is to change one mesh in the combined mesh. Uh, baker render type, I'll get to that when we do the doors. Uh, force to level, you can force this LOD into a particular level. You'd probably use that at run t with, from scripting if for some reason you wanted something when something was, uh, some, a collision, collider was triggered, you could force this LOD in a particular level. And, uh, then we need the levels. So there's, this tree has three levels of detail, so we're gonna add, three so I clicked little plus signs so there's one two three levels of detail and we drag the renderers in to these now you need to drag the object that has the renderer on it not the uh, not uh, the renderer might be buried a little deeper under in a hierarchy somewhere so you need to actually grab the object that's got the renderer and drag it into that field and then we set the screen percentage so um, the highest level of detail, I want that one to appear when maybe half the screen, it feels half the screen or closer. So that's going to result in a distance of 58 unity units. And then the next level of detail will say maybe 0.1 or 10% of the screen. Uh, let's go a bit higher. Uh, 0.2, 20% of the screen. And this last level of detail, we might go like 0 0.05. Now yeah, let's go to 0.1. Okay, and underneath each of these, it says that uh, the distance from the camera to switch will be 58 units. Um, for LOD1, the distance to the camera to switch will be 150 units and then this one will be about 280 units. So um, so the object will be an LOD 0 from 0 to 58. It'll be an LOD 1 from 58 to 150, and it'll be an LOD 2 from 150 to 275, and it'll be an LOD 3, or uh, sorry, it'll be culled beyond 280 uh, unity units. So this should actually work. Now we could actually test this, although we need to do the fourth step, um, add a camera component to your camera, which is super easy. We just click on the camera component, mesh baker, LOD camera. It just adds this component. And I had actually done that before, so I'll delete the second one. So there's an LOD component on that camera. So now if we push play, let's see what happens. Is there any error messages? I don't see any. No, okay. So if I switch to the scene view, there's my camera. So I can see the white box. That means this cluster, that's a good sign. So we're in the highest level of detail now. If I move the camera away, we should see it pop there. I don't know if you can see that, but we're popping into this lower level of detail. If I keep moving the camera away, we pop into the lowest level of detail. And then if I move away further, it'll eventually disappear. There. So it got cold from the scene when the camera's that distant. So you can move this back and forth, and you can look in the little preview to see how it, or split your screen to see, to see how that looks. Now, another useful thing, you can also turn on the LOD manager, if I turn the debug level to debug, or to the log level to debug, then in the console, you'll see, so, um, basically we, this is the baking, so we've baked and it tells you how many meshes were baked and how many clusters were baked during that bake, and as I move it away, and see, 
Nothing's happening until the LOD changes. Now, why is, why is nothing happening? Oh, uh, because I'm moving the LOD manager, not the camera. There we go. So I move this out, and then the LOD just switched, and a bake happened. LOD just switched, and a bake happened. And I move forward, LOD just switched, and a bake happened. So uh, that debug setting is, is useful for um, you know, seeing how frequently bakes are happening. OK, so the tree is set up. So let's uh, prefab that, because it's basically ready. So we'll go to my LOD tutorial scene and uh, create a new prefab and drag the tree into it. Call it tree. And we're done. Wait, uh, I gra dragged the wrong place anyway. OK, that looks better. Let's delete that and drag it back in just to demonstrate. Yeah. OK, so that tree is ready. Delete. OK, I'm going to go on to the next tutorial video. I'm going to stop this one here. And um, in the next one, I'll show you how to do the house, which is a bit more complicated because the level one has all the furniture inside. And I'll show you how to set that up. And the doors are also being baked by a different baker. So there's some a few different things being done there.